Somebody's down the stairs. Hey. hey what's your shirt say? Cafe Costa Rica. Cafe Costa Rica. What's mine say? Cafe Costa Rica. Cafe Costa Rica. And uh, here's a hint. Are we ready? See. Si. Hey everyone, we are in the car and we are on our way to pick up our friends Hernan and Vince who are going with us this morning. So I guess we should tell you what we're doing. Um, we left the house, it's just now a little before 7 a.m. Uh, we are on our way to a coffee plantation that's actually owned and operated by Starbucks. And Starbucks purchased this plantation a few years ago, mainly as a research facility. And uh, they don't grow coffee for sale there, but they grow coffee for research to help farmers all over the world that do supply uh, the coffee to all of the Starbucks. So they've just recently, in the last 30 days, opened the place up to the public where they offer tours. So we're bringing you with us so you can come along and we're gonna learn all about this particular plantation. It's kind of exciting, it's a, it sits on the side of the Poaz Volcano uh, here in Costa Rica and um, we have about an hour, hour and a half drive ahead of us uh, to get there. So stay tuned. We're the first nerdy, we're the only yeah. ones here. People don't really know about this place yet. No. It just opened. Sorry. That wasn't too bad of a drive. No, it's good. Well, we made it to Hacienda El Sacia, which is uh, the home of Starbucks Costa Rican uh, research facility. So we're gonna do a little tour here and check it out. Are you guys excited? Woo! <laughs> Woohoo, Starbucks. Cafe, cafe. <laughs> So, I mean, hello, look at this view behind me. Unbelievable, we got a waterfall down there. We got the whole entire coffee plantation behind us. Absolutely spectacular. So, Anand, be our tour guide, where are we? Okay, we are in uh, Alajuela and uh, here. Okay. This is Costa Rica, here. Oh. Small ah. strip of land here. There it is. See, see, see the, the world? Uh, see all the green dots? These are all the plantations around the world. Look. Yeah. All the green dots. Oh yeah, all these green dots. This represent. is Colombia. This is Costa Rica. This must be uh, Honduras. This is Mexico. Guatemala. Or Mexico. This is Mexico. 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 Yeah. Yes. Baja. And let's go around. Uh, let's go around yeah. the world. Okay, let's go on. What country? This what must country? be uh, Ethiopia. Okay. Ethiopia. Ethiopia. I'm, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah. They make a lot of coffee there. Malaysia or Indonesia? Malaysia. Java. That's Java. Same <laughs> yeah. And this is Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. This is Thailand here, up there. From cool. Pretty awesome. I like that. Yeah. Cool. What do you think, Wonky? I love it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Huh? Awesome.
but we made it. We did. We are here at the official Starbucks plantation. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful here today. This little area where we're sitting is just quite nice, and they got, a, of course, a Starbucks. Uh, we're, we just ordered a couple of cappuccinos. We've got some croissants coming. Can wait. <laughs> we haven't done the tour yet, so we're, we're waiting to do the tour, so we're having some coffee. It's a little gift shop, so I'll show you around there as well. Um, what do you think about this place? I love it. I totally love it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've been to a, color, a couple other coffee plantations before, but uh, first the time here. It's really nice. Yeah, they spared no expense. This was quite beautiful. Um, just to come view. here and sit in like on these rocking chairs and look at the there's a waterfall and the vistas and the views of the coffee. It's amazing. So far, two thumbs up. Company two. Oh yeah, come oh, here. Yes. Hernan, get in here. Company two. <laughs> we have good company. Vince, get back here. Hello. Hello everyone. <laughs> We're having a good time. Anyway, peace out for now everyone. This cappuccino is so good that none of us actually put any sugar or sweetener. A good cappuccino doesn't need any kind of um, sweetener, sugar, yeah. sugar anything. Okay. It's good enough, just the milk is going to make the work. I agree. And this is a really good one. Call me Raque, also all my friends call me. And also she is a new partner, a new tour guide, so she is in training. She okay. is Maria del Mar. So she is gonna, <laughs> so she is gonna be with us also in all the tour. Okay. So also all of you live here in Costa Rica. For how many years have you been here in our beautiful country? All the last. <laughs> so you are wonder percentico. Me too, me too. You too? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Also the coffee just can grow between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. And also we call all of this the coffee bell. Because it's just the only place in the world we can find coffee. And also here in Costa Rica and also in the regions all around the world, we are divided by regions that produce coffee. We have eight regions in Costa Rica that can grow coffee. For example, Guanacaste. Before I came here, I didn't know that in Guanacaste couldn't grow coffee. Also like in Ohancha, for example, they can produce coffee. Yeah, and also we have the west of the valley, Tarasu, there is a, a coffee that is very famous here in Costa Rica. We have also Orosi, Turrialba, Tres Rios, Brunca, and now the Central Valley. That is where we are located now. Okay, also you take a look here in our map. We have our logo, our logo from Nacienda Alsace. What does logo mean? You take a look at the waterfall that we have over there. Okay, that means our waterfall. Yeah, and also that means like you represent like the leaves of the coffee. Okay, here we are going to see how the life of the coffee store and also I'm gonna need some volunteers to plan a seat. Okay, what you're going to now, going to do now, you want some seat to plan a coffee? <laughs> yeah, of course. All yeah. rushing back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in this hole you are going to put the seed and you are going to cover with the soil. Now? Mm -hmm. See ya! See ya! <laughs> like a Spanglish. Spanglish <laughs> happens to me all the time. Oh, I used to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What you have already done, we call the miracle of nature. And why the miracle of nature? Because without this oil that is so fertilizer, and also without that sun, and also without the water, that's, that's it that you have already planned for it. We call this the matchstick, or also the soldiers. You can take a look, it looks like the helmet of the soldiers. And also, this butterfly is going to be like protecting the real leaves of coffee. And then they are going to fall down and disappear. Yeah. And then, uh, so the the stem grows like you have the seed and start growing and taking out the seed. Yeah, also let's that's, come by here. That's kind of... Yeah, also if you take a look from here, 
there is like a little skin here. The seed is inside. So that is skin that we have here is the skin that we are looking here. Okay. Yeah. And so in order to grow that seed, you can like if if I have a plant and it already has um, uh, the beans, I can just grab one bean, peel it, and put it in the soil, and it will do it. Or it has to go throughout for a previous kind of process first. Yeah, a previous kind of process. Before we plant the seed, we need to dry the seed. Then we are going to see why do we have to dry the seed. Okay. Also, we need to take it away some humidity of the bean. And then when the bean has the right humidity, that is going to be like 20% humidity, it is ready to be planted. Oh, okay. Like, can you tell me about Carlos again? <laughs> okay, Carlos Mario is the global agronomist from Starbucks. So that means that he, that he from Costa Rica, here from our farmer support center, he is going to ensure to the other farmer support centers that we have all around the world. That means eight farmer support centers. That's awesome. And he's Tico. He's Tico, 100% Tico. Buena, That's buena, why buena. we are so proud. Yeah, very proud. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. We are going to move then to the coffee field. Because in that moment they are ready to be in the coffee field. They are more, they are stronger. But when I see this stick here inside the basket, I thought, oh, that's garbage or something yeah. like that. And I say, do you know what this is for? Yeah, and I say to my partners, <laughs> I say to my partner, hey, do I have to throw this? And they say, no, racket, that's so useful. That's for you to tie your basket. And I say, oh, like now I got like it. That. Oh. I have my volunteer that is going to use this. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you put that's it in the here. high technology. You put it, yeah. I think that it works That's high do. technology. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, yeah. You put it right here. Yeah. You turn it. Yeah, he's a professional, right? Yeah. You turn it. <laughs> Until it gets so nice it's and tight. tight. Oh. Uh, it, we use that. Now I need, I, I need less uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, turns because I'm a little better. <laughs> 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 See? Bueno, bueno. Yeah. 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 The objective of this process that we are going to do to the coffee is to remove some layer from the coffee. That means that we need to remove the skin, the default. So the measure that we have here in our angarilla is the same measure that you can find in other wild milk all around Costa Rica because it is the Cafe, who is, who is the institute that is going to regulate our coffee industry here in Costa Rica. So that machine is going to remove us This part, we have other machines that is like not more narrow, so they can uh, remove the skin from the yeah from the small one. So this machine is going to be in church to remove the mucilage of coffee. Do you remember like something that the coffee bean has? Mm -hmm. Okay, this machine is going to be in church about that. Okay, for how many days are we going to have the coffee here? It's going to last about five to seven days. It also depends on how much sun we have today. And also, we need to raise this cup. And why do we need to raise this cup? It is because we need to dry the cup all the time in this one way. He's a professional. You need to ah, yes, yes, yes. You remember now? Yeah. yeah. Bravissimo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll put it on. Mm. So by the sound we know if it's ready, huh? That's yeah, by the sound we will know if the coffee has ready to continue the like process. A, like an instrument. Right? Yeah, okay. drop it, let me hear it. Are you ever hear about Palo de Lluvia? Like, uh -huh. like mm -hmm. Yeah, is, is it like the same? Yeah. Uh, exactly. Cool, huh? So, awesome. Awesome. Amazing. Another point. And also, this. These sacks are made by a jute, like it's like fiber. Very Yeah, and it's going to provide the coffee to to allow to the coffee to breathe yeah. here when they are in the in the sacks. Okay, we are going to remove this skin with a machine by friction. Okay, the machine is going to remove this skin that is what's the name? Parchment. Parchment. 
why we are doing that type of research. Okay, let's suppose that you are a coffee producer and there is and there is a disease that attacks your coffee plantation. What is going to happen with your coffee plantation if you have this disease in your coffee? Can lose all your production. And the quality. And the quality. So what we are going to do is we are, we are going to check the plant. Is it is because the roja is a fungus. Mm -hmm. So if this leaf has a fungus, for example, the fungus is gonna be like or like in orange color. Okay, in that way we know. So this plant does not have. But then they expose the plant to the fungus to verify that it's at least somehow resistant? Yeah, it is okay. because the fungus is also in the earth. Oh. So that means that we have this coffee here and it needs start to appear some fungus in the plant. We know that they are not doing like the work. Okay. But we know that they are not resistant. Okay. These plants here might get a fungus and these are uh, haven't in the same place. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, but, but then we are going to tell you this. <laughs> Oh, we like this. They're cool, right? Yeah, yeah. I like it. So now we are going to see the way we roast Hacienda Alsacia coffee. And let me introduce you my partner, Alejandra, but we also car here well, that is her last name. And also we have here Oscar. Both they are uh, coffee masters, and also both of them they are uh, barista champions. So that means that they know a lot of about coffee and now they are experts in the way we roast our coffee. Tiene una capacidad de 7 libras que van siendo 3.2 kilogramos y nosotros que está en una humedad relativa entre un 10 y un 12% que es la adecuada para almacenaje pero también para nosotros empezar el proceso de tostado. Con unas aspas que envían el café hacia adelante, hacia atrás y hacia todos lados. Now this is the best part, right guys? Yeah, right? This is the... It's time for a little tasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are going to taste the coffee in the way we taste the coffee. Okay. In expert. In a special way. In a special way. We're doing it the way they do it here. <laughs> okay, that beautiful view. <laughs> so hey everyone, we have learned here in the proper way to taste coffee and we're going to teach you that right now. So if you have a little Nail. single shot, you cover your hand over the top and Close your eyes. Yes, we're we'll it. <laughs> <laughs> and with this Bayard coffee, this type of coffee, you can sm smell like chocolate, brown sugar. It is like, 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 like the the wine, wine tasting. Yeah. They tell you how what how it, uh, it smells like, but you don't get it. Oh, yeah, so you get, like, your, you yeah, get your own. You'll your, get your own your, smell, but if you've never done it before, memories. try it. But once they tell you your Oh, yeah, like when she said like citrus, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> no, I went, I went to, a, to a wine tasting and somebody said that that smells like, like eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, that's what I want to drink. So <laughs> everyone has their own uh, memory. And, now the taste and then we're going to do the palate taste. Like, and you slurp. <sighs> bitter. And it's a little bitter, but not bad bitter. Yeah, it's like, actually they say this is like in, in the middle and then you can feel it in your mouth in different, like in the roof and yeah. like yeah. here. Yeah, it definitely coats the roof of your mouth and you get a nice acidity and nice... The acidity is the, the amount of saliva you can yeah. use. <laughs> and then once you've done that, you enjoy the hell out of it like we are and you drink it and salute to everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs> And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Call us, we, we will take you. Yeah. Yeah, the more you subscribe, the more I can bring you these cool videos. <laughs>
So and we got some cool stuff. Yeah, we did get some cool stuff. We bought a couple of coffee mugs, some t-shirts. We've had a great day, haven't we? We did. What did you like most about the tour? What did you enjoy? Uh, I guess, you know, the whole explanation and how they explain about the workers that come here right. during the harvest season. Yeah, and definitely. And all, all the uh, benefits that they get. Yeah, and if you come here, the cool thing about it is you really get a thorough explanation of the entire process from how they plant the seed and all the way the process of sowing the seed to the growth and then what's really cool about this place too is because it is a research facility you really learn about what they're doing to cultivate good coffee and coffee that produces obviously more uh, beans and be the more beans a coffee plant can produce means less de deforestation which I think is really good around the world that we're not losing trees mm -hmm. uh, so this plantation is influential throughout the world to all of the suppliers that supply coffee to, to Starbucks hey everyone uh, we're back sorry for the abrupt ending there at Hacienda El Sasia, uh, but unfortunately my camera battery died why we did a lot of filming a lot <laughs> we did a lot uh, so we had a great day I'll take a sip of my coffee here anyway um, we wanted to take a couple minutes and share with you a little more information and our thoughts and feelings and opinions about Hacienda El Sasia and our tour there. And overall, I give it a huge, huge, 100%, definitely, if you come to Costa Rica, go visit this place. How about you, Juan Carlos? It's a five-star. It's a five-star. Yeah. And um, as we said earlier, Juan Carlos mentioned one of the things that he liked about the tour is that we got a chance to learn about uh, the workers that go there in the harvest season. And I wanted to take a minute and expand on that a little bit because one of the things that they shared with us was uh, pretty cool. The, the workers that go to this particular plantation, they come back year after year after year and they bring their families and this plantation um, really gives them a lot of incentive to come back. They give them amazing benefits. Uh, they can bring their whole entire family. The children uh, have daycare while the, the parents are out in the fields working. Um, and because of all that, plus a fair wage, uh, these workers come back time and time again. They also have dentists in healthcare. Yeah, so healthcare, dentist, and they have a physician, nurse right on the property too, so anything they need is taken care of for them. So that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So we really like that. So two thumbs up to Starbucks and for your, for providing such a great place for your employees to work. Um, and then I had mentioned that I really enjoyed learning about the environment uh, and the fact that they really, really focus on uh, being cognizant of planting coffee around the world and the eight plantations that are sort of their um, facilities for research with Costa Rica being the main facility and the cool thing about that was and you saw in the video earlier the the gentleman Carlo who runs the facility he is the chief er ergonomist I yeah. think I said it right <laughs> of the eight oh yeah so in the, in the eight facilities around the world so all of the research and everything that happens here in Costa Rica is shared with those eight facilities and then those eight facilities share that information to all of the farmers around the world so that's pretty cool and the fact that it's done here in Costa Rica and Carlo happens to be Costa Rican so that's pretty awesome two thumbs up for that yay um, Juan Carlos and I have gone on another coffee tour we've actually visited uh, what's called the Doca plantation, which is very close to Hacienda um, Alsacia. It's literally just a few kilometers away. Um, and we did find out from the management of um, this plantation that they are friendly neighbors with each other. Um, and we did notice that there were a couple differences in the tour. So if you happen to want to go visit that one, we encourage you to do so because they focus a little more on the culture of coffee the Costa story. Rica, yeah, t talk about that. Story also, they mentioned um, like some differences between how the the coffee is different depending on the roast. Like mm -hmm. dark, the darker the roast is, the less caffeine it has. Correct. So yeah, we learned that like at that. the the doka. At the doka. Um, whereas we learn much more about. Their process. Yeah. The their pro particular process here. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, we highly encourage you to check that out. Not to say one is necessarily better than the other because they were both excellent tours. We just happened to film this one, and uh, believe it or not, Starbucks is not providing us with anything. Um, 
in order to give you this review. This is a fair and honest review. Um, Just because we enjoy it a lot. Yeah, yeah. And we, we are frequent customers of Starbucks. We've been to Starbucks pretty much all over the, <laughs> all over the world. If we see one and we're picking up a, a little bit of coffee, um, we definitely like our coffee. Um, the other thing to share with you at this particular plantation, I think I mentioned earlier on the car ride when we were on our way there, uh, that this is not a producing facility in the sense that the coffee that is grown here in Costa Rica at this particular farm is not sold around the world. However, it is sold right there at in Hacienda store. Alsacia. In and store. as a matter of fact, we picked up a bag of it. Uh, we haven't even tried it yet, but we've got some whole bean. Um, and uh, so we're excited about this. And uh, this particular coffee was harvested and grown right there on site. And this is the only place you can pick up this particular coffee is if you go visit and uh, do the tour. So um, we just wanted to share that with you. Haven't tried it yet, but we did try it while we were there in our it coffee was, tasting. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It was really. pretty, pretty amazing. And the coffee tasting, by the way, sorry. Uh, um, originally, we had planned to film that whole thing with the, the two young ladies that were our tour guides. And unfortunately, that particular camera battery also died while we were doing our tasting. So we shared with you a little bit about what we learned uh, with our good friends, Vince and Hernan. We had a great time with those guys. So anyway, so yeah, we picked that up. Do you want to talk about the other stuff we got yep. at the gift shop? So, um, yeah, we'll set that there. Uh, let's see. Oh, if you go on the tour, one of the cool things is they give you these um, bandanas. Um, and you basically, you know, put it around your neck. Let's do that. It has a little diagram of the place. Yeah. So it's kind of a map of the facility and all yeah. of that. And it has the logo on it and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's included in your admission price. And actually, this comes in really handy because it can get really hot out there. And you are up on the side of the volcano. And if it's a sunny day like it was for us, that sun is pretty intense. It beats down on you. So it helps your neck so you don't get sunburned. So that's a good thing. Um, the other thing we picked up was this wonderful bag. And uh, it was a little pricey. What was it like in U.S. dollars? Around $60. It was around 60 bucks, And... You know, and I'm not necessarily what I spend that kind of money usually, but one of the reasons we did is um, it is actually manufactured in Bangladesh, and it's part of the Apollos program, which is um, basically it's a global citizen program. And what that means is this particular bag was made by uh, women in Bangladesh, and um, by this project, basically what it does is it gives that group or women around the world in different communities that otherwise may not may not have the opportunity to work a fair wage and a job. And so since the money went to a good cause, yeah. why we not? Have support Absolutely. Everyone. And we picked up a couple t-shirts. I'll show you wonkies. It's very cute. And we learned a little bit too about the logo. I see which we can talk a little bit. You want to tell them about the logo? Yeah, so you probably watched before in this same video their um, waterfall that they have in the hacienda. So this is the shape of the waterfall and also like the coffee leaves. So it's a combination, the coffee leaves plus the waterfall. Right, the leaves, the waterfall, and then the two little dots, or three little dots at the top represent the cherry or the bean. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty cool. I like the logo and uh, these shirts are really, really soft and comfy. So we each picked up one of those, so that's it. And that's, you know, all we brought back with us. Um, what else do we want to tell them? What else do we think is important that they should know about the tour? Oh, uh, the difference between the price for um, citizens yeah. and um, visitors. Uh, so for citizens, it's uh, 8,500 colones, which is... Um, around like 15 yeah like 15 dollars and for visitors the price is 30 30 30 dollars right so, so it's about unfortunately for me twice. because i'm from the usa and i'm not a citizen of costa rica my price to visit was more expensive than his price because he is a local um and you might find that just a little bit of advice too don't freak out if you go to a national park or you go to uh any other facility where you're going to do a tour it's not uncommon in costa rica that there is a price for the locals and a price for non-locals 
And it's not unlike if you're in Orlando, like for example, I live in Florida, and when I go to Disney World, I get a discount because I live in Florida. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Or as we call it down here in Costa Rica, gringo pricing. <laughs> anyway, a little bit. So that's important to know if you do come, so don't don't freak out. And it is well worth the admission. Yeah, it's worth. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, the tour takes approximately an hour and a half to two hours, um, not including the coffee tasting. So it's about a, yeah, a good hour and a half to two hours walking around, learning. Um, I recommend you get there early in the morning. We decided to get up super early, and we drove there. We arrived at about 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. Our tour was scheduled around 9.00. Um, and what that meant was there were four of us and we had our tour guide plus there was a young lady who you met in the video who was learning so we had two people and just the four of us and then by the time we finished our tour and we were getting ready to leave it was getting much more busy and we noticed that the tour groups were roughly around eight to ten people not that that's a large group but it was really nice getting there in the morning and not having to mm -hmm. have huge crowds of people and having a nice quiet tour yeah plus we had the opportunity to you know, walk around and pretty much have the entire place just for us. And yeah. it was quiet, really nice. Yeah. And we recommend that you do take the time. Don't just rush through the tour and go into the gift shop and leave. After your coffee tasting, that facility, and I showed you in the video, where there's a whole seating area, and it overlooks the vista of the coffee plantation where the waterfall is. They have rocking chairs. They have chairs, tables, etc. Treat yourself, bring a little extra cash, buy a cup of coffee, buy some, you know, typical stuff that you can get at any uh, uh, Starbucks around the, the world, you know, as far as croissants and uh, sweets and pastries. And we did speak to the manager and she's talking to their corporate about maybe in, enhancing the menu a little mm -hmm. bit more in the future. They've only been open three weeks, so this is very new, very um, new. And but it is, in it, it's overall, it's a beautiful facility. Um, don't want to belabor that point, but yeah, yeah. We, hi we highly recommend you go visit. And we're looking forward to having friends come down so that we can take them there. Gives mm -hmm. us an excuse to go back. Of course. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Uh, oh, um, the service, you know, the our two guys. Oh, yeah. They were fantastic. Yeah, Rocky, if you're watching this, you were amazing, young lady. You were absolutely spectacular. You answered all our questions. You had good humor great knowledge of coffee the plantation some of the history so thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts i know all four of us really yeah enjoyed it same with uh, maria del mar yeah. the the the, um, the girl that, that was learning absolutely was in training she was fantastic yes both of our tour guides were amazing and you can't go wrong if you end up going there and you get either one of them and we wanted to give another special shout out to shani 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 Herman. Yeah, Shani Herman. She happens to be from Seattle. I know she's down at, uh, she's the manager of, of the facility. And we were getting ready to leave and we asked her for a recommendation of a, a restaurant to eat yeah. at. So here's another bit of advice for you. If you come there and you're looking to have a great lunch or a dinner, just about five kilometers further up the volcano on the left-hand side of the road is a great restaurant. What was it called? Chubascos. Yes, Chubascos. It is amazing. The views are great as you drive up. The, the restaurant itself is absolutely beautiful. It is typical Tico food or Costa Rican food, and uh, the casados there are out of this world. The plates were humongous. And uh, so, we, yeah, we highly recommend that. So, Shani, if you're watching, huge thumbs up to you. Thank you very Thank much you. for your hospitality, and we really look forward to coming back and visiting the plantation again and see what changes are made. I know you've only been open a few weeks, but you guys are doing an amazing job. Amazing, yeah. So, thank you very much, we'll, and... Uh, we'll be... Coming back soon, I hope, with more friends. Yeah, yeah, we want... So if you're watching and you're our friends from the USA, come visit us so we can have an excuse to take you back over there because we really enjoyed it. Anyway, so with that being said, we're going to finish our coffee, and we really appreciate you all watching. There's a couple things we would really appreciate you doing, and that would be... Subscribe. And hit the like button. So don't forget to do that. We really appreciate it. Peace out, everyone. Ciao.